Hello and welcome. My name is Carol Carter and I'm the founder and CEO of Global Minded. And we are delighted to have you join us today for our virtual 2021 conference called um, Reboot Resilience, colon, uh, Rebound Remarkable. All of the different sessions we have um, over a span of 10 weeks going until the third week of June have to do with the ways in which we can find our inner strength, our capabilities coming out of the multiple level difficulties of the last year. So we are delighted to um, have you share with us this week called um, Empowering Students Through Technology. And we have some very innovative people today who are really redefining the admissions to college process and uh, we serve first-gen, low-income students, first generation of college. And this is such a wonderful organization, the Ed Equity Lab, because they serve high school students who can get into all of these different colleges, but may not have the resources and the connections that you need to understand how that game is played. And for those of you who work with us, you know that we very much focus on that at the college level and help students connect to role models, mentors, internships, and jobs so that they can not only complete college, but get into promotion pathway jobs. So we're really delighted um, to be able to work with the Ed Equity team. And um, this is Alexander Slack, who runs the organization, and want to welcome you and have you introduce your panelists or have them each introduce themselves. But welcome, everyone, and thank you so much um, for joining us today. Thank you, Carol, and thank you to the entire Global Minded Ed team for all of you uh, tuning in as well for such an important topic this week. Um, we're so excited to be here to share about our work and particularly to um, spotlight our students and our scholars and, and the work that they're doing uh, in, in this space. So I'm, like Carol mentioned, I'm Ali. I am the Chief of Staff at the National Education Equity Lab. I am a former teacher. Um, I used to teach high school biology and anatomy here in my, in my home city of Atlanta. And I've now been in the education equity and justice space for about a decade. I'm gonna pass it to my colleague, Ashley, to also introduce herself. Hi everyone, really excited to be on and to speak with you all today. I'm Ashley, I am the Student Success Director at the National Education Equity Lab. Um, my background is in education policy. I worked at the Department of Education in New York City for a little bit, um, and I used to teach a civics curriculum in the Bronx in East Harlem. And I am super excited um, to let our scholars take a moment to introduce themselves as well. They are the stars of the evening. Yes, thank you, Al Ashley. Um, my name is Dijon Chase. I am from Gallup, New Mexico. I graduated from Hiroshi Miramir High School, and I am a first year student at Columbia University. I am so excited and honored to be here today um, with such amazing people, and um, thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Michael Santos. I currently attend the Bronx School for Law, Government and Justice here in the Bronx. Um, and I am a junior and I'm also really excited to be here to have this conversation um, with everybody. And I know, Fabi, you were just able to join. So if you're able to come off of uh, turn your video on and say hi. Yes, sorry. Um, hi, my name is Fabio Olmedo. I'm from Bronx Career College and Preparatory High School, and I'm really excited to be here. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to do my best to keep our remarks at the beginning short. Um, I want to provide a little bit of context about our organization, our mission, and how we um, how we operate. Uh, but I ultimately want to spend the most of our time this afternoon in conversation with our scholars. Um, they are the reason why we are here. They are the reason why we're doing this work. And you'll see that they are absolutely amazing young people. Um, and it they give me hope for our future, to be honest with you. So I'm so excited for you all to meet them. Um, before we dive into our conversation, though, I do want to share a little bit more about the Education Equity Lab and, and, and what we do. So we know that um, selective colleges and universities can be 
some of the most influential pathways for students from low or middle uh, income communities to really drive change and to build wealth and to build a future that is that is really opportunistic and exciting. Yet a lot of these selective colleges and universities have very few individuals from low or moderate, moderate income communities. And there are a whole host of reasons for that. But one of those drivers that we at the Equity Lab focus on is opportunity. We know that there is vast amounts of talent across our country, yet opportunity is not equally distributed. So that is what we're trying to change um, at the National Education Equity Lab. And the way that we are tackling that is through a college and high school model that is really bringing together uh, the, the colleges and universities that our students are striving to attend and the high schools that are too often not included in the conversation and trying to connect those dots. So we do that through a few key, um, five key components. The first being we engage top selective colleges and universities uh, like Harvard, our inaugural uh, college or university partner. Uh, Howard University is one of our um, premier partners. Uh, Cornell University, Arizona State University, and a whole number of universities that we will be adding to our roster in this coming year. We bring their most popular courses. So those courses that the students at the institution say, you can't leave Howard without taking this course. We take that course and we bring it to high school students at Title I and Title I eligible high schools across the country. Now, a key component is that these courses are college credit bearing. So students earn college credits when they pass these courses so that when they do graduate from high school and they do go on to college, they can apply those credits at that institution uh, of their choosing. Now, the second key component is that we embed these courses within the school day and we, we bring in and we invite teachers within each of the high schools to lead and support the students through the courses. So I, I mentioned earlier, I'm a former teacher and I just fully believe and I've seen the power that teachers can have in the classroom. And so teachers are one of our biggest, uh, biggest and most important parts of our model, right? They are there to support students throughout the course and, and to really help them build the college going skills that this college course can really help cultivate. Third, we work with each university to uh, select teaching assistants. So these are undergraduates or graduates that are the discussion leaders, right? So just like in a large university course where you have uh, a discussion section that meets once a week, we, we mimic that exact same college experience and do the same thing. So students get to know someone who's a bit more of a near peer at that institution. They get to have conversations with them about the content, but then they also get to talk to them about what is it like to be on campus at Howard or at Cornell or at Yale? And, and that we've seen has been particularly important and impactful for our students. We are also very much focused on the digital divide. We know that the pandemic has highlighted um, that there are some communities and students that are still disconnected from the internet and from technology. And so our team is committed to making sure that no student uh, is unable to participate because of a uh, lack of technology or connectivity. And then lastly, we focus on a whole host of supports. And I was actually speaking with uh, Carol about this before we started. Um, we would like to think about these supports as a pipeline, right? And to think about how we can catalyze and use this opportunity that students are engaging in as really a catalyst to college and through college. And so that means that we engage with amazing partners uh, in the nonprofit um, and college going space. We have partners from uh, College Advising Corps um, to uh, uh, Michelle Obama's Reach Higher and, and many more that really support students through this experience. I'll also share just a little bit about our goals with this. So when we think about what we're doing, we really think about it in kind of three different ways. So first, we think about this opportunity as advancing and demonstrating college readiness, right? Students are taking a college course, an actual college course that students from that institution are actually also taking as well. And so they're building that college readiness, those skills, those habits of mind that are gonna be so important for them when they do attend college. We're also focused on increasing college access and affordability. 
right? For students to have an experience at these different institutions is sometimes the best way for them to know what life might be like when they go to that institution. So that's increasing access. And then affordability, when students are able to rack up those college credits before they go to college, that can result in thousands of dollars worth of savings when they do get to college. And then lastly, we're about connecting the dots. So we want to connect the college admissions officers to our students that are particularly uh, successful and, and motivated and are pursuing these opportunities uh, across the country. And so that is one area that we're particularly excited about going forward and something that our college and university partners are excited to, to, to dig into as well. Um, and then just a little bit about where we are. Uh, so I'm very proud to say we started in 2019. We were in 25 Title I high schools across 11 cities. Um, New York City, LA, Gallup, New Mexico as well, where Dijon is from, and, and many more. And now coming up in fall 2021, we will be in over 100 cities. We're going to be working with over 250 Title I or Title I eligible high schools, and, and we're going to be in over 30 states. So that is a true representation of the demand and the excitement that is out there from our high school partners, our district partners, uh, and our students and families. If I could show you just the excitement from families, aunts and uncles that we get in our inbox about these opportunities, it is just speaks volumes. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, Ashley, who's gonna talk a little bit about um, what we've seen so far in the data. Thanks, Ali. So to date, we've had 86% of our students who have completed the courses have passed and earned approximately 2,248 2, widely transferable college credits. Um, we like to frame this to students as, you know, college credits equals money. This is money that you're saving for the future. This is money that you don't have to allocate to future credit hours when you potentially go to these institutions or transfer these credits to other institutions. In our end of semester surveys, we've also seen that 96% of students said that they would recommend this opportunity to their peers, and 100% of our participating districts asked to participate in future course opportunities. And really, we think one of the main drivers you know, of these numbers is our community that we build with our students. And that's kind of been called our, our secret sauce, if you will. Um, we really want them to know how valued and appreciated they are from the moment that they enter our courses. Um, so from the moment that they start, you know, we send them congratulatory emails with bells and whistles. We want them to know just how special they are. We want them to know that this is an opportunity that they should feel honored to be a part of, that they should be listing on their resumes, that they should really be talking up. Um, and we really want them to know that, again, we are just so proud of them throughout the whole way. We have orientations, we have pep rallies, we have end of semester graduation ceremonies that they're invited to, their families are invited to. Um, sometimes we have upwards of 500 students on Zoom at once, which is such a surreal experience to have, to just scroll through all the windows and see all those faces, see their siblings and their family members popping in in the background. Um, it just, it's definitely one of the highlights of my job. Um, you know, we send them notes of praise throughout the semester. We, we believe that success begets success. So we want them to know when they're doing well. And you know, if they need a little nudge, we also want to send them notes of encouragement and let them know that we're there and we're supporting them. Um, we also have a National Student Advisory Board, which all three of our scholars on the call right now are a part of. And that's really to make sure that we're elevating student voice at every way throughout the semester. Um, we want them to know that you know, they have a say in what the course is looking like, and we want to get real time feedback from them. And then I think the last thing that's important is building that bridge that Ali mentioned from high school to college and career. Um, and so we have a lot of additional opportunities outside of the course offerings to participate in early college programming or early career programming where they can, you know, get support from the organizations that Ali mentioned, like College Advising Corps or other nonprofits that help students, you know, prepare for college early and get that exposure and also see what are some early career professionals doing. So what might that major look like in an actual job and what could it potentially be in the future? And so I think that's 
enough about us. I would really, really love to turn it to our scholars now um, and again, really elevate that student voice because I think that they really are the superstars of the evening and they will have so much to say in this conversation. So I'd like to start with um, Dijon. So as a current college freshman, can you describe what the college admissions process was like for you? And you know, if you were to look back, would there be any advice that you'd give to current high school students? Yeah, um, wow. Uh, looking back on my experience with applying to college, it was definitely daunting. Um, I didn't receive a lot of support from the administration at my high school. Um, and I remember the weeks leading up to submission, I would look at my application and I would think this is probably, you know, identical to millions of other applications in the country. Um, but I think something that also really helped me during that time was looking at the poetry in America credential that I had on my application. And it was always more than just, you know, um, a few words on a piece of paper for me. It was that knowledge that I could succeed in these classes at these, you know, prestigious institutions that no one talks about in Gallup, New Mexico. <laughs> and um, that seemed so far out of reach. And that was so important to me um, when applying. And uh, yeah, um, I also just think applying to college, um, it can be hard to uh, deal with bumps in the road if something goes wrong. Um, my application process did have bumps in the road and you know it didn't go swimmingly. Um, there were a few things that went wrong. And I think advice I would give to high schoolers is um, just stay positive and try, try to enjoy it. I think that is one of the biggest things I wanna highlight today. Um, it should, it should be fun, <laughs> even though it's very scary. I understand that I went through it, um, you know, trying to decide your future. But I think once you try and enjoy it, that shows through on your application. And, um, you know, just be yourself and speak your truth. Um, also something I would uh, really say to any person who would listen <laughs> is um, apply to apply to all the schools that you wanna to go to. Even if they seem so far out of reach, even if you know you don't think you'd ever get in in a million years, because that is what happened with me. And um, you know, I had to have someone else. I had to have my older brother tell me to apply to some of these schools. And um, you know, I am now going to a very good university, and I'm very happy with where I am. So believe in yourself, um, and you can do it. You can do it. I really love that, Dijon, and I really love the point that you highlight about, you know, trying to enjoy it and having fun along the way. I've always been told to kind of think of college admissions season as an opportunity to really get to know yourself, especially when you're writing those personal statements and those application supplements, just really taking the time to kind of sit down and do those thought exercises with yourself and really digging deep. So I, I love that, you know, framing. And I'd love to turn it to, to Michael and Favi. Um, I know that both of you are currently in high school. And so just hearing what are your early stage thoughts on, on college at this point? Um, you know, what, what, are, what are your thoughts about the process? Or what are your planning stages? Um, well, I can start. I would say that for me, when I think about, you know, the college process being that I am a rising senior and, you know, that process is around the corner. I just start thinking, and what you started to mention about like getting to know myself now or like, you know, sitting down and knowing what is it that I want. And I feel like that's going to facilitate that college process for me and being able to, you know, sit down and in terms of like creating a college list, um, you know, being able to know what is it that I'm looking for? Because like, for example, right now, I'm like, I'm pretty set and like, you know, knowing uh, my major, which is, uh, I want to major in political science and public policy, but uh, when it comes to like, the application process and essays and things, it's just really getting to know myself and being able to, you know, find some sort of support because I feel like that's something that I want to think about and have around 
when I start applying in like basically a month or two and start thinking of that process. That's great, Michael. And Fabi, I know it's a little bit early for you, but are there are there any thoughts that are swimming around in your head or in regards to college? Well, yeah, thanks to the National Education Equity Lab, I've been able to start looking at more colleges, really expanding my horizons. I haven't set on a major yet, but I am still trying to build my resume up, build my applications. And overall, I'm just trying to enjoy the high school experience as much as I can. It's great to be able to um, be offered all these opportunities, so at least I know what I want to do in the future and get a better idea. So then when I get to junior year, I'm like, okay, this is what I want to do. And here's how I'm gonna do it. We love that. We love a good plan. And so, Dijon, you kind of touched on this a little bit in what you were saying, but you know, other than taking the, the Poetry in America course, uh, were there any other exposures that you had to, to college level work or, or college going activities when you were in high school? Um, no, <laughs> I, I, no. I don't think I did. Um, and that's what made um, the biggest impression on me, I think, is because um, I never had taken a college course before. And, you know, all of a sudden I'm taking a poetry class with Harvard. So it was, you know, I think that made it even more monumental that I hadn't had that previous exposure. Um, and I took this, I took the Harvard class when I was in my senior year, when I was applying to colleges. So, you know, all these things happening, all these things happening at the same time. Um, but looking back on it, the Poetry in America class just opened so many doors for me. Um, you know, I'm here today with all of you <laughs> and that wouldn't have been possible if not for this class. And, you know, I'm so grateful and I, I've always felt so lucky to um, have been a part of it. And um, yeah. Thanks, Dijon. We are always so grateful to have you on our team and we, we love the, the thoughts and the leadership that you display all the time. Michael and Favi, I'm also interested in hearing, um, you know, in addition to the courses that you both have taken with us, um, are there any other college going activities that you've been a part of, you know, within your school or maybe even within your community outside of your school? Um, I think, well, I, I, I can relate to two activities. I would say that before I, I got to take my classes with the Equity Lab, um, I got to take one class at my local community college and that started to prep me and help me out, uh, you know, in getting that college rate of coursework. Um, and then I think that it was also some occasional like college trips with my schools um, or visit. Um, and although I thought, I think those are really helpful, like, you know, they don't get to the level of like a college course because you could go to a campus, like, oh, it looks really nice. So we're like, I want to go here. It looks like, you know, I like this building. I like how this looks, but I think getting into that college rate of coursework and being able to, you know, actually take the class and being able to know the work other rather than like, you know, the visuals or like the campus itself is something that has been like extremely valuable. It has helped me a lot. And Ashley, it might be helpful, um, or actually, Michael, this is a question for you. What courses did you take with us to share with everyone? Um, so in the fourth semester, I took the Principles of Criminal Justice class at Howard. And then this semester, I just finished the Environmental Science and Justice class um, with Howard as well. Great. And Dijon had mentioned earlier that she took the Harvard uh, Poetry in America course. That was our inaugural course that we launched in the fall of 2019. Um, and then Fabi, do you want to share which courses you've taken with us as a sophomore? I'd love to. My very first course was in the fall semester. I took Poetry in America with um, Arizona State University. And then here in the spring semester, I just finished the same one as Michael Environmental Justice with Howard University. Thanks. I thought that might be helpful for some context for everyone. Um, 
I mean, Howard has just been a fantastic partner of ours. Harvard was our, again, I said earlier, our inaugural partner, and ASU has really helped us um, scale to meet the, the demand and the interest from students and schools from across the country. So I'll pass it back over to Ashley now. No, thank you for that context, Ali. And I think on that point, um, you know, what would you all say that you got from those courses? So from taking actual college courses? I think um, confidence for sure, um, but also uh, just skills and different things that I think are essential for college, like time management. Um, I also writing um, discussion posts for the poetry class greatly improved my writing skills. So it was that, but um, you know, I think like I mentioned earlier. It was also just the knowledge that I could do these things. Um, you know, I've said, I feel like I've said that before and I will probably say it, you know, for the, <laughs> for the rest of my life is that I really didn't think that I could do this kind of work and um, poetry in America, what Ed Equity, what Ed Equity Lab gave me, um, it's just that confidence and knowing that I could do it. And that came from the opportunity. So, um, yeah. Um, I think that I would have to completely agree. Um, I think that the confidence uh, of like, wow, like, you know, I could pass a class, a Howard class or a college class in general, and being able to have more confidence and like, you know, not only a college, but pursuing some other colleges that might not have made it on the list or on the application. I feel like it is something that I've been able to take away from the courses, but also like the skills, as I was mentioned, like, you know, the time management skills, um, knowing how to use Blackboard, which, you know, uh, knowing how to use these different websites and being able to, you know, learn how to communicate with a professor, which could be a very different thing from like your regular teacher at school or, you know, learning how to take even like learning how to take notes in a lecture for like a whole hour um, and gaining those skills that I think and I hope are going to be very useful. Um, later on when I am attending college, I feel like has been one of my biggest um, takeaways. Right, as um, Dijon and Mike already said, confidence and time management are the crucial skills that I've also gained from these courses. And to add on to the confidence aspect, before my teachers would sometimes tell me, you're really smart, you're, you'd probably be able to get into Ivy League, and I'd laugh, but in my head, I'd be like, I believe I don't think that's something for me. I can get into maybe um, a state university, but something that far, I could never make it. But then I took the Poetry in America class, and at first it was really stressful. I was like, there's so much work. How do I do this? But thanks to the, to the team, to the Equity Lab, my own trial and error, I was able to get through it. And then when they said, you can take other classes, say uh, different classes, different topics, but you still get college credit. I was like, I'm ready. Give me whatever you have. So now it's still kind of far away at college applications. But if I, did, I keep going through this process, if the Ed Equity Lab keeps offering me these courses, I'd obviously take them. And I feel a lot better prepared. So I feel like I have an advantage compared to like Michael and Dijon who had a rough time getting through their application process. And I think that's really important. And it's something that everybody else should have. Thank you all so much for sharing that really helpful context. Um, and Favi, we love having you and we would love to have you in so many more courses. By the time you're a senior, you'll just have like 100 credits probably. And so I think I wanna touch a little bit on Ali mentioned this earlier, but you know, our mantra as an organization is that talent is equally distributed and opportunity is not. And so I'd love to hear a little bit from you all kind of, you know, how do your peers think about college and, and do your peers have early college opportunities like this? And you know, what, what do you think they, they need more of if not? Um, speaking from my background in Gallup and at Hiroshima Mira High School, um, you know, we didn't think about college uh, basically at all, I think until senior year. Um, and I distinctly remember I went into my senior year and I sat down with one of my counselors at the beginning of the year. 
And uh, she asked me, so what colleges are you going to apply to? And I had no idea. And she told me, from, you should have been thinking about that from the moment you stepped into this, into this building, to this high school over two years ago. So, um, you know, for us, it was uh, something that would wait until senior year. But I think, um, you know, getting that experience early and knowing that college um, is the future, I think is very important. Um, and also, I think what people from Gallup would need is honestly just hope for the kids there. And I know that's very tough. How do you give people hope? But um, I remember going into my college fair and um, the colleges that were there were, that were presenting to all my classmates, um, you know, class, people from the Reds, kids from the reservations, um, you know, from disadvantaged families. Um, they were all, you know, state schools, which isn't bad. I'm not saying that's bad. Um, I think college is very important and, you know, college is college. But um, when I went into, you know, the more selective universities, there would be a handful of kids. And I just, I remember talking to one of my classmates and she said, you know, why would I attend one of these fairs when, you know, I'm not gonna get in. So um, yeah, it's just, I think giving kids hope and giving that exposure both from the universities and from the schools and trying to you know, recruit these kids and tell them that, hey, it is possible and that you can reach these places and these goals is the most important. Yeah, um, and I, I'd like to add on when I think of like my community or like my school, um, it's mostly like, I feel like one of the biggest struggles, like there's always an idea, it's definitely mentioned or it's there, but you know, it just doesn't come up, uh, like it comes up, but it doesn't directly come up until like senior year when it's time to apply and everyone's like just stressing to figure it out. Um, so when I think of that, I think of that, you know, situation and process, the two things that I think of that is needed is both access and support um, and access to, co to college courses, access to like more guidance. Um, but, you know, you could have so many programs. I feel like, you know, sometimes they're there. You got like, you know, they might be on Google or on Instagram page, but I feel like it's not only about access, but it's also about support because, you know, some of my classmates or some of the people in my community, they could get an email, oh, a free college course, here's free credit, but they might not feel confident enough or might not feel they have the support enough to go through it or even apply to it or even start trying out in high school um, to see if they're capable of doing these college courses. So I think about, you know, definitely access um, and hope as well, but you know, support because you could have so many programs, you could offer a thousand college courses, but if you're not giving students that support in high school to start getting confident and start feeling that they could do things like a college course in high school, then it doesn't make sense to provide opportunities if there's no support. Right, like everybody already said, that confidence, the support, the hope, um, also a change of mindset. I know a lot of my peers, when they think about college, I don't know if any of them even think that far. They think, I want to get out of high school. They think high school is a chore. They just want to get out. I don't think I've ever heard anyone say, I want to apply to this college. What colleges are you thinking about? It's always, I want to get out of high school. And I think it's because of similar reasons that they don't get enough support. They don't have enough hope. They don't think that they're going to make it. So they don't bother at all even if you do give them these opportunities and resources, a lot of them think, why should I even bother? I don't think I can do this. And when they see somebody else succeeding, they'll probably think, oh, they're smart. That's just the way they were born. I, I, couldn't, I can't compare with that talent. So a change of mindset, if we can bring in a new fresh perspective, someone who is similar background and say, I was just like you and I made it, then that could like flick a switch in their brain and make them think, if they made it, I can do it too. That exposure is also crucial where they're saying, I made it through this. Who says I can't make it through college or through this other course? I just love all of these recommendations that we're hearing right now. It's just, it's, it's very inspirational. It's making me think about the way that 
you know, high schools and universities should both be considering how to how to redesign this process. And and I, I'm learning a lot from you all right now. Um, I think I think you've given most of the recommendations that that come to mind. But you know, I'll, I'll pose the question just in case there's any more you'd like to add. But my my final question of the evening, my final jeopardy, if you will, is. <laughs> If you could select one thing that you would redesign about, you know, the way that colleges or high schools support students through the college admissions process, what would you do? How would you redesign that or what would you change? I'm going to go ahead and start us off with um, taking this right off from what I said about changing your perspective. I think high schools need to set the bar higher. Students think, I just want to get out of high school. I just want to get out of high school. And the teachers, most of the time, they just go, here's your plan, graduate. It doesn't matter if your grades are low or if they're high, graduate. So if we can get more expectations, higher expectations, like I, you're all bright minds, here's what I expect you to do, and here's the help and support you need to get there, that would completely change the college admission process. I feel like you would get more um, students from Title I high schools applying to higher, um, to more prestigious universities. And with that new influx, they'd have to look at us. If they see more students, then they're gonna have to look at us, they're gonna have to look at our applications and they'll start realizing that, um, just like the Ed Equity Lab states that talent is evenly distributed, the opportunity isn't. So if we could just get that support so our applications look like somebody else from like a more wealthier, better off community, then they'd see that we have talent too, we have brains too, we can, we can do this. We can go to um, somewhere like Harvard, Ivy League schools. Yeah, I definitely have to agree with Fabi and I would like to add on that. My, I guess my two recommendations um, like we design would be one to like, you know, provide support earlier in high school so that as I mentioned earlier, students are not stressing out and it's their senior year. It should be something that it should be building up, you know, sophomore year, you start maybe building a list. So it, it should be something that should be incorporated in the curriculum or more into like, you know, uh, freshman year, sophomore year, something that it should be a build up. It shouldn't be like a random drop of like, here, apply to college, let's get to the process. And then I feel like my second, um, I guess, recommendation would be for support uh, to be more individual and it, for it to be, you know, more, I guess, customized because every student is different. All of us are different. We have different experiences, different situations, different grades, different aspirations, you know. Uh, so if we're able to meet everybody's needs and being able to provide individualized support, I feel like you could get a, a higher success rate and you could get more students to apply to college or pursue what is it, whatever the, it is that they want to pursue after high school because they're gonna feel more support and they're gonna feel like, you know, there's a focus on them as an individual rather than them as like, you know, a number or just part of a, a class. Yeah, and um, just adding on to both of those amazing points um, that Fabi and Michael laid out, um, you know, just exposure um, and giving the kids these opportunities, I think is uh, so important and um, just giving them the opportunity to succeed and to you know, look at themselves and say, oh, I can do this and I'm capable. And you know, it's, not that, um, it's not that I can't, it's not that I'm not good enough. It's because of things that I can't control that I'm in the position that I'm in. Um, just, and you know, I've said before that I feel very lucky to have been given this opportunity. And I think the main takeaway I would want to leave is also just that it shouldn't, you know, kids shouldn't need to be lucky to have opportunities. And, um, you know, I'm so, I'm so lucky to be here, but um, I think there's so many other kids out there who also deserve it. Thanks so much to Jean, Michael, and Favi, and just a huge round of applause, just so much love and support for you all right now. I think your words were just so powerful. And, you know, I was a first generation college student when I was entering and, and a lot of the things that you said really resonated with me. And 
I think you guys are really the future. And if I had leaders like you in, in power when I was going through the college admissions process, I know it would have been a lot smoother. And I have so much hope for the future because of you and all your ideas. And again, just thank you so much for all that you've shared and all that you continue to do. Ali, any final questions or remarks for our scholars? No, just uh, I've had the privilege and the opportunity to get to know uh, each of each of these scholars and all of our scholars. We've we've been able to to reach three thousand scholars to date, and I had mentioned earlier we'll be reaching ten thousand students by twenty twenty two. And so, you know, while you everyone who's joined has been able to meet uh, Dijon and Michael and Favi, there are so many more students uh, scholars like them. Um, and there, like Dijon, are so many more students who are deserving of opportunities like this um, that we are eager to, to reach and also eager to help shift the system, really change the system so that it is uh, stacked in their favor, not against them. And, um, and I think, like Ashley said, with our future leaders, with Dijon, Michael, and Favi as our future leaders, I think we are on the right path. I, I'm excited now to open it up to questions and conversation. Carol, I don't know if you have any questions or you know, definitely for our attendees to, to ask any questions of. Sure, uh, you bet. And we would love it if you all, you can just put them right in the chat. You don't even have to put them in the Q&A, um, but we would love to have your questions. And one thing I'll say is um, we are so focused at how to transform the college experience and one of our big goals is to help these college campuses be more inclusive places with more of a flat hierarchy. And I just see you all as the leaders when you, when you are at Columbia or wherever each of you decide to go to really be able to say to the leadership, the college president, the provost, the deans, that you and other students like you can be at the table with them you know, quarterly because they can't solve for your issues without you there. And I think that you're gonna be part of that first wave to completely transform um, the college campus in that way. It looks like there's a question from Leslie, I think in there. What is the role of colleges and universities in this space? So I'd be interested to hear what the students say, but I'll share you know, from the Equity Lab's point of view, we think they play a big role, right? We see our university uh, and college partners as playing a huge role in this space, right? We know that they spend lots of lots of, um, of money every year flying around recruiting athletes uh, in a lot of this, the, the zip codes that we are working with, the students um, from those zip codes. And so we want them, those universities to be flying to those cities to be recruiting students academically, right? And we know that they can do it. And we've seen it, we've seen the excitement from, from the universities and colleges that we work with, and we're excited to see more of it. You know, there's, I think there's a lot of opportunity still out there for colleges and universities to take a step down into K-12 and think about what can we do to make this process more equitable um, and, 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 and better for our students. But I, Dijon, I'm interested to hear what you think, because you are in college now, you're at a, a large institution. Uh, any thoughts from you? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, being at Columbia has been amazing. And, you know, having this experience going to um, school here, I think, to me, I just wish someone had told me that education and learning could be a door to so many different paths and that it could be fun and that it could be you know just so many different things and I've come to learn that you know in the past few months that I've been here and I think the role of these colleges and these universities is you know giving a future education giving a future to these kids and um you know it's not a hardship for me and I would certainly like Bobby had mentioned, change the mindset, you know, learning um, can be fun and it's an opportunity. And I would love to see that. Thanks to John. Michael, you look like you're gonna take yourself off mute. Oh, um, I was gonna mention that I, I totally agree with you with, you know, the reaching out and going into those communities. 
that you know they never think of but i feel like a, a very important thing to keep in mind too is like you know that the conversations or like that process of you know being more inclusive and um having different students just like doesn't end with recruitment i think it continues once those students are inside those institutions and i feel like you know having spaces for um with conversations like this for example within those schools are extremely important with those students who are in those schools that might you know that they may have never made it into the school um i feel like you know those conversations and that representation in terms of like admissions officers and you know student voice should be present in the institution itself as they're thinking of like recruitment and um, things like that. Absolutely, I'm I'm just blown away. I I, I and I know you all, and so this isn't shocking to me. But um, yeah, Michael, you are spot on, and I think can't wait for you to join. I know Howard is is first on your list, but I can't wait for you to join an institution and, and to work on some of that change from within. And it looks like we've got another question here from Lisa. And the question is, what role do you think your high schools could play or do differently to support you during your high school experience? For me, I would say um, the first thing that came to mind was help on the college applications um, because I personally didn't have that. And I know um, there are people dedicated within the schools who do that, but um, coming from my perspective, I think um, just doing more, doing more to help the kids in that regard because it is, uh, you know, not something you exactly train for during high school, you know, it's something that you, you don't take a class on how, on how to apply to college. Um, at least I didn't. So I would want to see more support on that end. Um, but also I think just giving, trying their best to expose the kids to all these opportunities. And I know that's also not something that they can do on their own. So that's why the work here at, at Equity and other nonprofits is so important. Great, I think what Dijon said is really important. And I'm gonna go ahead and boldly say that high schools need to have more people on hand. There's guidance counselors that are supposed to help us with the application process and in our freshman and sophomore years are supposed to help us start thinking about that. But I feel like there's not enough to go around. I know my guidance counselor administers ninth and 10th grade and it's very hard for him to get to every single student. So like, I haven't spoken to him much. I don't think he even knows if I have a plan, if I have what I'm interested in. So if we could get more people to go around to have more um, individualized that process and you get somebody that can get in your head and think. So if you like to write, then maybe these are some careers you can look at. If you think of writing as a hobby, but you want to major in a STEM field, let's look at a STEM field that has you writing. It needs to be a more individualized process, a lot more personal, and that's later going to help on in the top of the application process when you moved on to a different guidance counselor. You're like, I already talked about it. I know what to do. You just have to help me get my paper sorted, get everything sorted. I'm ready to go. Yeah, I, I have to agree completely um, about, you know, again, more a more personal experience um, and getting more people uh, to help. And I know that could be very difficult sometimes for schools and there's like budget and it gets very complicated sometimes. But I feel like having more people to help because, you know, um, from our side, like, yeah, it's unfortunate sometimes that we don't get help. But for like a guidance counselor, like it's also understandable that they can't assist 100 plus students at once. And it kind of creates this dynamic where like, they cannot provide the best support and we are not getting the best support so i feel like you know getting as many people to help but also to kind of alleviate that stress like you know everybody in september needing help again starting earlier and being able you know entering your senior year um i i think uh dijon was mentioning earlier like it should be more of a fun process now your senior year okay i have my list ready um, I have this ready. Okay, now my, you know, my fall semester of senior year is just writing and, submit, and submitting stuff. It shouldn't be um, that stressful. And I think that comes with, um, you know, starting earlier and having a more personal uh, experience. 
Definitely. And I think there's also that whole thing of just giving yourself permission to explore, you know, careers, majors, fields, and that we don't always have to be driving with sophomores and juniors, like decide what you're going to do, you know, like you can have that process and not put that added pressure on yourself before you are able to explore what those different things might, might mean to you. Any other other questions or thoughts for these incredible students? I, I've got another question for you all. What would you most want to say to freshmen at your high school as they as they, you know, the rising ones, the ones that are in eighth grade, they're going to be starting in the fall. What would you most want to say to them? if you could sit down with them kind of one-on-one -on -one about the future. Um, I guess I'll start. I would say that the, the one thing I would say is like, it's never too early to start. It's never too early to start. And I feel like, I'm muted myself, sorry. Um, a lot of times, um, you know, you're like, oh, freshman year, I have time, you know, sophomore year, oh, you know, still have time. Then junior year comes, like everything is just there. So it's never too early to start. Um, you know, focus a lot on finding those opportunity, but you know, also doing things to get you to get to know yourself as a student, you know, try to get to know yourself, what it is that you like, uh, you know, and doing stuff that you enjoy, but that are able to help you and help you gain knowledge. And again, it's never too early to start looking at stuff, reaching out participating, taking college courses. Um, yeah. Um, I would encourage them to follow, um, follow a path doing something that they love because, um, you know, you can find careers doing the things that you love. Um, and I feel like that wasn't highlighted enough for me in high school. It was always, you know, be a scientist or be a doctor. <laughs> and those things are very important. But um, I just, I would want to tell um, those students that they can succeed, you know, and this, the sky is the limit, reach for the stars, you know, you are capable of it. Um, and that there is a path for you and that you can find a career and you can go to college doing the thing that you love. me i think i would say don't be afraid to start exploring like michael said it's never too early to start my freshman year i really just i was focused on academics i thought that there were clubs there were sports and i was like that's not really for me i never really bothered to go but i think we should encourage them more to discover themselves see who they are and they'll find something they love like dejan said um you sh your career should be something you love so they can't really go for something they love if they don't know what it is they love Thank you. I any other questions from people listening? Carl, I just have to say you get the number one attendance award because I really think you are at every single session that we do. So do you have any questions for these students? You are, you are the most dedicated follower to our session. So thank you so much for making that a priority. Any, anybody else with questions for these incredible students? Um, one thing I'll say is Celeste, if you wanna put in the, um, the chat, we have a student speak report that we just published of some students who are a few years beyond you. Um, but one of the things we really have as a hope for the relationship with, with um, Allie and Ashley and Leslie and everybody you work with is that we can really broaden your voice, you know, when you get to college. So we have a report from some of these students that we've worked with this year. It started out with 102, and then um, we selected 25 to represent the 102. And so they did a report for college presidents and policymakers and people who run companies who, who want to hire amazing talent like you all. So um, we can, we'll, or we'll send that as part of the follow-up. We'll have the, the link to this session. But, um, but I just want to encourage you all, you have incredible instincts, you have great leadership. And I really believe that um, as incredible as all these institutions are, 
they also can have some shifts to better accommodate students like you, and you can really help them define the ways in which they can make those shifts and those changes. So we look forward to doing that with all of you. And any other, um, Ashley or Allie, or any other kind of closing, closing comments before we wrap? No, I'll just say thank you again, Carol, to you and to the Global Minded team. Um, I am also very thankful for our scholars and for their voices and for, uh, for them joining us today. Um, we are just continually blown away by your passion and your um, expertise and knowledge. And again, I'm just so incredibly hopeful knowing that you all will be our future leaders. Um, and I guess one just thing I'd like to leave us all with is Dijon, your focus on hope, right? And I think that is particularly important right now. I know that for many students and teachers and, and, and really everyone across the country, but particularly our students um, that we work with, this is a hard semester. This is one of the hardest semesters that most students have experienced. We are at the very tail end of this pandemic, hopefully, and we are tired and we are logging into Zoom uh, session after session. Um, yet again, we are just continually blown away by our students' persistence and resilience in the face of all of these challenges. And so I just urge everyone listening and, and students, all of you to keep going and, and to, to kind of take what the students said today to heart, take it back to your organizations and, and share, share their voices with all of them because they give me hope is I guess what I'll close with. That's awesome. And I do think this is a time where the difficulties of the last year, they're gonna show all of us the strength that we have that we never knew we had. And that is the going to be, you know, decades from now, the gift of this time as we look back. And um, so, and I shared when Dijon got on here that um, my parents had me later in life, but my parents were both part of that World War II generation. And I think this is gonna be our equivalent of that, just what people have gone through. So you guys have incredible resources within you. And um, I think you really will inspire so many of your peers who, who can find that within themselves as well. So thanks to all of you. You guys did an incredible job. And it looks like we've got yeah information in the chat if you'd like to learn more about the Ed Equity Lab. We will have the link to this session posted in our newsletter tomorrow. We have 15,000 people a day read our newsletter. So you're going to have people from all over the place and some different parts of the world learning about you and um, who you each are as leaders. And then we will look forward to um, inviting you all in June. We have our uh, leadership program for students, which we'd love to have you be a part of. And then we hope to see you all in June um, 2022 in Denver and hope we're all live together when we're, we're not spending all this time looking into the computer screen to see each other. So thanks to all of you for your incredible work and looking forward to so many more ways we can support incredible students like each of you. Thanks everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Yay, you guys did such a good job.